Okay, people members, you're welcome. I'm Moisha Saddam, and I'm always very happy to meet you. Okay? Remember last time when we met, I left you with an activity, and I want us to go through the activity, and we see if we were attentive. Okay? Now, let's see. Uh, get your books, open the work, and we mark together. Let's read question number one. What is meant by the term air? I expect you to have air is a mixture of gases. Has someone passed that one? Put there a small take using a pencil. Okay? Let's get to question number two. And two characteristics of wind. Remember we said wind has speed. It also has direction. And if you also have strength, it's also a correct answer. So don't worry that for me, I don't see, I see speed and direction, no, even string. Question number three. State any three benefits of wind in our community. Is wind important? Remember we said wind is air in motion or moving air. Is it important? Let's see. One, wind is used in winnowing. When you harvest some crops, like the cereals mainly, Sometimes they have dirt, so we winnow and we remove the dirt, then we remain with a good seeds. We also have, it drives away bad smell. Are you complaining? Uh -huh. When there is bad smell in an area and the wind blows, it blows it away and you get fresh air. Okay? We also have, it helps in rain formation. Uh, mainly, uh, the moist wind cause rainfall and if you still remember during the, the the other cyclonic rainfall we said that different wind masses meet meet and then the warmest wind since it is light it raises up it condenses and it forms rainfall so wind helps in rain formation do you still remember that one okay let's get to question number four how is wind dangerous in the environment Mainly when it is too, too much wind or strong wind like tornadoes, how can it be dangerous to the environment? One, strong wind destroys crops. Or you can also talk of strong wind can blow off roofs of houses. Then a strong wind can also capsize boats on water bodies. Okay? Let's see question number five. Uh, give question number five. Give any one way how wind affects water bodies, uh, affect water transport. Yes, strong wind can capsize boats or can make uh, boats to capsize. Do I have someone who has passed everything? Can you pat your back and again pay attention? Now, if you missed out a point, it's okay make sure you write corrections then today's lesson be a little more attentive push anything that distracts you put push it away so that we can learn without any distraction now what are we expected to do today in today's lesson i expect you to know the meaning of sunshine you've been saying mommy it is shining now you are going to let me know what does it mean sunshine what does it mean also the uses of sunshine and dangers of too much sunshine okay now uh let's see our first session i told you this is a new style of learning whereby i bring i come to you in sessions we learn in sessions uh and today we are basically going to know more about sunshine as an element you can call it element aspect or factor of weather. We have learned previously about wind, about uh, rainfall, so now we are going to take to, to go on with sunshine. Now, what is sunshine? If someone asks you, what do you know about sunshine? What do you say? Okay, I want that idea. Now let's confirm with the teacher's answer. Oh, wow. Sunshine is light. Actually, is light and heat received from the sun okay as you can see in my illustration 
when you wake up in the morning, you see light. And after some means, you also receive heat. You go and sunbathe and you receive that heat. Now that heat and light from the sun is actually what is known as sunshine. Are we together? Very good. Now, here I remember in P1, they used to ask, which is the main natural source of heat and light? And that is the sun, okay? So the sun is the major natural source of heat and light. Then heat and light from the sun is what is known as sunshine. Do we now understand that one? Okay, my children, what is sunshine? What is sunshine? Okay, sunshine is light and heat received from the sun. Let's see the next session. Now, this sunshine can be measured, by the way. It can be measured, and it is measured in hours. You see something on my screen? Yes, that thing is known as a Campbell sunshine recorder. And it's the instrument that we use to uh, measure the amount of sunshine received in a day, or the intensity, or the hours of sunshine received in a day. Now, where do you think we can find such an instrument? Do you have it at home? Okay, you have remembered. When you went for the trip last year, you went to the airport, Entebbe Airport, yeah. That's where we can find uh, uh, such instruments like airports where we have the weather station. Even some schools have. Is your school having? You will ask your teacher. Okay. Now let's see what happens is next. Uses of sunshine. Is sunshine useful to people? Someone has said yes. Now think, think just of two ways how sunshine is important. Someone said, now I'm seeing someone under the sun, uh, the, the sun the sunshine can be one of the uses of sunshine. We are yet to confirm. Let's confirm. One. One. A sunshine provides rice for cooking with the solar cookers. We have what we call solar cookers. Even uh, they are not common in our country. Some few people have them because we have very many other alternatives we use to, to get Heat. But in some countries, people use cookers, solar cookers to cook. The way you are using this gas cookers, electric cookers to cook, there are some people who use actually solar. We are going to see the illustration. It dries cloth, it dries harvested seeds, it gives us heat and light, it helps plants to grow well, and it helps the body to make vitamin D. Now, we have to see one by one. I know someone is already worried. Yes. Do you see that on my screen? It is known as a solar cooker. It is not a common thing, I know. But if you have it at home, well and good. Now, the reason why they are not common in our country, we have very many other ways of how we can cook. For instance, we can use wood fuel, like the one you are using home. Or we can use electric cookers. We can also use, using hydroelectricity, mainly, yeah? We also have the gas cookers. So which one do you use? Now, for me, at my home, I'm one of those few Ugandans with solar cooker, okay? So this is a solar cooker. That is used for cooking. Let's see another point. Now, sunshine also dries our clothes. Usually when your white wind is shining and you say, Today, we have to wash our clothes. You don't wait when it's raining and you say, Mommy, let's now wash. Even when it's about to rain, you say, No, Mommy, today we are not washing. Because it is not shining. Why do you always wait to shine? Because sunshine quickens or helps our clothes to dry. Of course, by increasing the rate of evaporation in these clothes, and they get dry. Okay? We also have another point, and that is. Uh, it, it helps to dry harvested crops, or you can call them harvested seeds, mainly the cereals. As you can see in my, uh, uh, my illustrations, when you harvest, these crops are not fully uh, dry. So what you do? 
you have to put them under sunshine and they dry for so that you can keep them safely without uh, uh, getting rotten or without rotting. Are we there? We also have uh, another point here. It is a source of heat, mainly when in the morning time, when you are from your beds after taking a shower. Some of you like going outside and you squat under the sunshine. So you want to have that heat. You want to enjoy that heat because you are feeling cold. Now the solution is to go under the sunshine. So it is a source of heat. Okay? You can see my friend there. My friend the other side under the umbrella. Because of too much heat, is using an umbrella. So when the sunshine is a lot, you can protect yourself using an umbrella, as you see my friends there. Now, let's also see the other use of sunshine. It's a source of light. You are able to know that now it is day. When there is sunshine, when there is light, when it is shining, you know, yeah, it, you are able to see outside. When it comes to evening, it gets to night. The sun has sets in the west, and now you are no longer having light. You go to the man-made electricity and so on. But during the day, there is light. That light that comes or that is received from the sun. So sunshine is also a source of light to people that we used to see during day. Now we also have that one. Sunshine is one of the conditions or requirements of plants to grow well. You are going to say, teacher, how? Okay, how? Now, you see the, the light mainly, no sunshine is light and heat. So the light part of sunshine helps these plants to make their own food through the process known as photosynthesis. Hope you now recall some science there through that process. Now, when these crops are able to make their own food, they grow well. Just like you, when you get a balanced, balanced diet, you grow well and you look healthy. Look at someone of nine years and you think he's 20. He's already big like, like Mr. Saddam because you have good meals. So even these plants, after making their own food, they feed on it and they grow well and they grow, grow healthy. Now, let's see another point. You see my friend there? Aha. Uh -huh. He's enjoying the heat from the sun. Actually, it helps the body to make vitamin D. This sunshine helps our bodies. In our bodies, or on our skin, there is a pigment called melanin. That melanin traps sunshine that the body uses to make vitamin D or to produce vitamin D. So sunshine helps uh, our bodies to make vitamin D. Okay? Let's see what is going to happen next. Oh, yeah. Now we are done with the uses of sunshine. You still remember some? We said it helps our bodies to make vitamin D. It helps crops to grow well. It dries our cloth. It helps in rain formation. That is through evaporation. Okay? And many, many, many other uses it is a source of light and so many others now let's see activities done during a sunny weather or during a sunny day what do we do when it shines do you know an activity that you get involved in when it is a sunny day uh-huh share with your neighbor share with me one two okay let's confirm now one harvesting crops during sunny day days or during sunny weather, weather is the good time for farmers to harvest these crops. Because remember, these crops, they need to dry. You harvest them when they are ready, and you dry them so that you can keep them without rotting. Now, when you harvest during uh, rain weather or rain season, it means that these crops are not going to get enough, enough heat to dry. Therefore, what will happen to these crops? They are going to rot. Do you want them rotten? No. When they rot, they do other things like you put them back in the garden as manure or you are going to throw them. Yet you, we don't want to throw our yields. Two, clearing land. That's the right time, the good time for you to clear 
the land so that you wait rainfall and you plant okay our seeds we also have washing clothes i told you earlier that we need to wash during uh, sunny weather because we need these clothes to dry and in time so when you wash during sun sunny weather it's very easy for you to dry your clothes now uh, this is what i was talking about harvesting we harvest our crops during dry, uh, dry season or dry during sunny days in order to dry these harvested crops the word the harvested is very important in this aspect okay we need to harvest ready crops after harvesting them we dry them we also have clearing land we clear land during sunny days or during sunny weather we also have washing cloth this one i've explained it a lot because well, i guess you can see in my illustration i've told you the reason why we should wash during sunny days in order to dry our clothes okay because this heat from the sun will increase the rate of evaporation in this water which is in the cloth will evaporate from it and it dries now i am about to come to the end of the lesson and I guess everyone is enjoying I see someone very excited to learn. That's the good mood that you should always have. When you like what you are doing, you do it perfectly. The way you see, I'm doing, okay? I'm doing it well because I love it. I'm proud of it. So also when you are learning, love it and be proud of what you're doing. Now, session four. This sanction, however good it is, when it becomes too much, it is dangerous. That's why I want to say that too much of anything you can complete. So even here, when it is a lot, it becomes dangerous. And you want to see how dangerous can it be when it is too much. One, it can dry up water sources. You know examples of water sources? The lakes of wells, springs, uh, rivers, that's why we have seasonal and permanent rivers. Now, seasonal rivers are mainly affected during too much sunshine, so they dry up, and that is a bad thing. Imagine if people were getting water from that river and it dries up. Where would you get water from? The animals. You know what will happen next? Death may occur. So, too much sunshine dries up. What about, what about this? So, two, it can also dry up unread crops. Crops. What do I mean here? Crops when they are still in the gardens, they can dry up because there, there isn't rainfall to support the growth. Crops need sunshine as well as rainfall in balance. So when one uh, overweighs the other, there is a bad effect. So when it is too much rainfall, and you have your plantation, they are going to dry up before they are ready. The rate leads to death of animals. You know animals feed on grass that we call pasture and of course water. So even the grass or the vegetation uh, is affected when it does not rain. The grass will dry up, the water bodies will dry up. And now what will these animals eat? Imagine, they are going to starve and they die even it leads to famine because famine is that state or period when there is no food when there is scarcity of food now when these crops unread crops dry up do you expect to harvest them no they are destroyed before they get ready now what will happen there will be no uh, there will be low food production that you might call scarcity of food and that is what we, we term to be as famine. It also leads to drought. When it uh, shines for a long time, that period becomes uh, a drought. Okay? When it overshines, it turns to drought. So it leads to drought. Hope we are together, my good friends. Now, uh, this is actually what I've been talking about. As you can see, uh, dries up water sources. We also have hundred crops. We also have animals die because 
there is no pasture for them to feed on, okay? Even people go ahead to stuff and also die, okay? We also have uh, 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 this uh, farming, as I've explained earlier, that when unread crops dry up, you want to harvest them. They are spoiled, they are destroyed. So there will be low food production, cost cast of food, and that is farming. See now my friend is begging, he's crying, no food, that is farming. Now, you see, this, that is a camera, if you are to look and see very well, it's a camera. Now, imagine, a camera needs a lot of water, okay? And now it's also taking the one, this bottled water, because the water sources are dry, and it becomes very, very expensive for you to, to provide bottled water to a camera. Now imagine if it takes three jerrycans, how many bottled uh, water are, are those? Be very many. And if you don't have enough money, it means that you won't be able to sustain that animal and it will end up dying. Okay? Now I have designed for you a very good uh, simple activity. Where was that tempting? I know you are going to pass everything. And we are not very many numbers, by the way. They are just six numbers. Now, today I'm going to read through with you, but next time you are going to read on your own because now you are a P4 member. You are a big boy. You are a big girl. Of now eight years, nine, ten, you can read by yourself. Now, question number one, dash is light and heat received from the sun. Question number two, how is sunshine similar to wind as related to weather? Do they have any similarity? We shall see. Which is the major natural source of light and heat? Number four, name the instrument used to measure and record sunshine. Talked about it. Question five, how is too much sunshine a danger to the community? Why are farmers advised to harvest their crops during dry season. I hope to, that everyone is going to pass these numbers and my lesson comes to an end. I remain Mr. Waisho Saddam. I love you, stay safe. Let's meet in the next lesson.